us. We're, we're going to be trying to do a Wednesday night service. And uh, just in full transparency, it feels weird to be here without y'all. <laughs> and it's incredibly weird to be talking to a camera. That's why I brought two other weird guys up here with me um, to help make this more weird or less weird. Mm -hmm. So you can let us know. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook tonight, would you do me the favor of actually signing in um, to our uh, the F Facebook comment page? Uh, Julie is here, and she's actually going to be letting us know um, that you guys are hearing us and that this is working. So um, it is a real privilege uh, to be here, and I will be honest, I'm excited to see what God's going to do in all of the things that we're watching happen around the world, but also here in our in our hometown and, and in our state and uh, in the United States. So. We look forward to doing that and being with you tonight. Our plan tonight, uh, we want to get take just a few minutes and give you guys kind of the the layout. What are we looking at? What's Liberty Lake Church doing uh, over the next few weeks? And and how are we going to address this time of uh, being restricted to our homes and 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 hanging out there and kind of isolating ourselves? Restriction might be a little strong in the word because most of you are um, I don't know Americans and some of you are even <laughs> live in Idaho. And, and so being restricted probably isn't the word, uh, mm -hmm. but some safety recommendations um, that we're going to take uh, serious and, and actually uh, impl apply here for our ministry and our time together. Let me open in prayer, and then we will begin uh, going through our information here with you guys uh, tonight. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this time. Thank you for uh, the team being willing to be here and to take this time out of their night. I just pray, Lord, that as we come before you this evening, that you would speak to each heart, and that you would speak through your word into each home uh, that is present here. And Father, we want to be your church. We want to serve you, and we want to minister the gospel uh, to everyone that's available and that's around. So Father, would you open our eyes, open our ears to what you're doing, and help us uh, to be the, the body that you've called us to be, even in uh, this time of great opportunity and challenge uh, that we find ourselves in uh, today. So we thank you and praise you for that time, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. I got a, uh, I got a text here. That's awesome. Uh, my bride just texted and says, not seeing things well. So I don't know what that... <laughs> she should be now. All right, you should be now. So... Um, Good stuff. Hey, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to go through, uh, introduce ourselves, and take a couple of uh, notes of business. Uh, my name is Shane Fries. I am the teaching pastor here at Liberty Lake Church, and um, I've been I've been here now almost two years, actually. May will be our second mm -hmm. year that Sally and I have been uh, blessed to be here as part of the church. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Travis Burks. I'm the worship and youth director um, since September, so I'm one of the new guys. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here a little longer than that because you and your bride were hanging out with us over the summer too. Yes. So it's we're getting close to a year now that almost, you've had to put up almost, with us. Almost a full year they've put up with me. So <laughs> Cool. And I'm Craig Meredith, and I'm one of the elders here at the church. I've been here just as long as Shane has. So Awesome. To okay. the day. To, yeah, pretty, to the day. Pretty, pretty close. much, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for being part of this. Um, so our plan tonight, we're going to go through some details real quick, and then um, Travis is actually going to lead us in a couple of songs this evening, um, and then we're going we're gonna to join it together and read through uh, Job 38, uh, the first 24 verses, and just wrestle with that for a little bit tonight, and hopefully be encouraged, uh, and just turn our eyes to the Lord. So uh, part of what the plan is for the Wednesday night service, we wanted to create an opportunity for you and uh, for us as a family to connect, uh, to get information, a way for us to to, to corporately talk about what we're doing, what the church is doing, um, and to, to be able to translate that information out to people in a positive way, but also a, a way of grabbing a hold of the Word of God and refocusing ourselves and, and encouraging and challenging one another to grow. Um, so that's the plan for tonight, and that's kind of the structure that we're going to do. We'll actually end with a song. Um, and then my, my heart is, at this point is to come back on and just to close um, with, with some, a couple of closing comments. Um, so after our last song, please stay put, and um, we will close together uh, in prayer and, and also with a few closing comments. So, Craig, would you tell us a little bit about Sunday morning plan sure. and what we're doing there? So Sunday morning uh, service is going to be at the regular time uh, at 10 a.m. Please join us online. Consider how you can connect with your family 
uh, during this time. Take the time to get together as a family um, to worship together and uh, get your Bibles out. Um, listen. Uh, and the reason I say get your Bibles out is we're not going to be putting the scripture up. So you get to look it up and read it together. Engage with questions and comments on Facebook. Um, and we'll see whether or not we answer those. But anyway, uh, we'll do that. And then discuss it with your family. Then, as James says, be doers of the word and not Amen. hearers only. Get out there and do it. And uh, then um, uh, if, you have, if you don't have kids at home, uh, consider how you can connect with your neighbors. Um, maybe they can come over. You can go over there. You can invite them to watch, discuss it with them, um, those kinds of things. Um, the last thing is people have been asking and sending us emails on how they can give. Um, how do you, since we don't have a box for you to plug. So um, this can be done by mail. Uh, it's P.O. Box 189, Liberty Lake. Uh, area code is 99019. You can also send it through PushPay on the church app. Uh, be sure and download that app to your phone or on the website. Awesome. Were you going to tell us a little bit about God at Work as well? Can you... Uh, share with us what we're sure. doing there. Um, so, God at Work, uh, send in emails to us um, that we can share, and we will go through those. Um, you can, uh, that's yeah, email would probably email be, be the, the best, best way. Yeah. Um, do we have an email address? That we do. We should? Uh, yeah, admin at libertylakechurch.com. Okay. Uh, you should find that on the app and on the webpage and on Facebook as well. And we will use the we'll use only the best of them, of course. <laughs> of course, <laughs> and we'll let you, Julie, decide which those are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. That'll be perfect. Hey, Travis, why don't you share with us what you guys are doing for youth ministry? Because this has been a little diff uh, impacting on that process sure. as well. Yeah, it's 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 been it's been been weird, but you know it's an everyday thing because you know God likes to send us through weird seasons. Uh, that's why we trust in Him. But so. Uh, if y'all have the app, you probably just got a notification I set up for six because I planned ahead for that. And uh, so what we've got planning is that we're going to do a Zoom meet. And for, for those of you who don't know what Zoom is, it's basically an online video chat um, application app type thing. And in the app, you're going to find that I sent out a pretty little verse of Hebrews 10, 20 through 25, uh, talking about let's not neglect meeting together to encourage one, one another and... Uh, encouraging one another into love and good works. And so let, let's continue doing that. Um, we won't be able to like uh, play games and stuff like that, obviously, but the meeting time is going to be on Sunday evenings at 5.30 to 6.30, and it's going to be via this uh, Zoom option. And uh, in the app, it gives you all the information. If you have questions, you can email me uh, at travis at libertylakechurch.com, or you can uh, call my phone number, which is on the app as well. Um, just for... for for those of you who are curious about Zoom, it is free. It's 100% free. I'm, I'm taking the, the hit on that point. All you need to do is just log on there, uh, plug in the ID number, and uh, we're good to go. And we'll encourage each other, pray with each other, and talk about the Word. And uh, th there'll be other things that we're working towards. Uh, I've got some game nights, um, video game nights, for, for us nerds out there. So we'll be doing that uh, here soon. You know, I think the interesting thing about what we're experiencing right now is that for a lot of our young people, this is kind of normal. Yeah. <laughs> for them, I mean, for them to be on their phones communicating with their friends and seeing all that stuff, that's pretty normal. Yeah. It's more us more mature people more mature. Um, <laughs> that are maybe struggling with being involved tech, with the technology and being engaged in that area. So yeah. thanks for the work that yeah. you're doing on that. So I'm, I'm telling you, get on your phone. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> yeah. You have permission. That, that, you have that permission. is awesome. So in, in light of that, you guys, how to connect with our church. One of the things that I, I want to remind you, we have several different options. Um, we have the web page. We have Facebook. Um, we have our church app. There's email. Our phone is still working. And so please call in. Uh, you may end up on a voicemail process. It's just part of what we're working through is how, how to man those things and how to get those, those phone calls answered. But it's really important that you know that those areas, we are monitoring them and we are uh, taking prayer requests. Uh, and we're excited to hear about God at work. Um, one of the key things that you can do for us is to go to the webpage or go to our app um, and actually sign in and update your information on our connection card. If you're not positive that we have your name 
and a phone number or an email address, please go to the app. It says connection on the top. You click on that, fill out that information, and we will get that and be able to have a good communication with you guys, good, good contact information to be able to reach out, um, to pass information on, um, and to share with you what's happening. The, the, another really important aspect is the food bank. We've been receiving uh, a number of calls, people asking, what are we doing with the food bank? How are we going to um, help serve our community? Um, we've shut down the food bank as far as having public access at this point. And what our desire is, is that we as the body become the access point. Um, so we're working on the bags of food that we'll be able to actually give out to people. Um, and what we're requesting is that you as the body engage your neighbors, find out about your seniors and, and families that are in your area that might be struggling and let us know what that what those needs are. And then our goal is to actually resource you with the ability to leave a bag of food or, or possibly meet some of those needs um, in a real tangible uh, and, and, and personal way. So th the church is going to still be the church, but you get to play a really integral part in, in serving the community and being engaged in that area. So I'm really looking forward to see what kind of relationships this is going to connect, how God's going to use this to actually move our church into places that we haven't gone yet, um, partly because it's been really convenient to show up here and, and to do that. And so um, there's some work being done on that, and we're really excited to see what's happening um, in that area. At this time, I want to shut down our, our discussion time uh, or our information time. If you have more questions, please contact the church through one of those uh, media sources. And we're going we're gonna to turn this over to you, Travis, and, and let you um, lead us in a couple of songs. And um, we really look forward to, to interacting with you. Please feel free to sing along with Travis in your home as loud as you want. Maybe your neighbors will wonder what's happening, but it'll be okay. Um, let's turn our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the Lord as we consider uh, what he's done for us through music this evening. We'll start out with How Great Is Our God, won't you sing with me? The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me how great. Is our God, oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all oh, will see how great. How great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. And my heart will sing, how great is 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Father, how great you are. How great you are, Father. We love you so, so much. And uh, we ask that through this evening, through this time, that um, in our discussion that uh, your spirit would flow, Father, and uh, that your spirit would speak through us. And that um, by that same spirit, we would um, just sense a connection with the rest of the body um, uh, through through this internet means, Father. And uh, we... uh, we give our souls into your hands, Lord, and uh, we seek your wisdom, and uh, we cry out mercy, and we just praise you, Lord, because you are just awesome, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Travis. And uh, man, I hope you were encouraged and had opportunity to sing and, and let your heart um, just enjoy that process. It's uh, definitely a new thing, and and not quite sure how how uh, this was going to go, and so we are, um, I am really, really thrilled that you have joined us, and uh, it's at this time that we want to engage our hearts with the Word of God. Um, we're going to look at Job chapter 38, so start turning in your Bibles there. We're going to read a number of verses. I've asked Craig to read that, but I want to remind us uh, uh, kind of where Job's at right now, and uh, Job has gone through a time of suffering that that is significant. Um, he lost all of his uh, finances is his possessions um, were lost. His children uh, were were killed, and um, in a, and a, actually it was a house accident where it collapsed on them, and and they all died. Um, and out in in that process, and and through that process, he also began to lose his health. And so in that condition, in that space, um, in that time in his life, uh, he had three friends show up who began to encourage him. And uh, with their encouragement, it was kind of like, well, clearly there's sin in your life. That's why all this has happened. So you just need to repent, and then God will give you all the good stuff back. And Job begins to defend himself and um, wrestling with the goodness of God and the realities of these truths and what he believes. And in the midst of that, um, God shows up and takes a minute to remind Job and and his friends, and this dialogue is happening with them, um, and um, remind them who this God is. And um, it's, it's this moment in Job 38 when God speaks to Job out of the whirlwind and begins to ask Job, do you know who I really am? Are you aware of who it is that you're engaging right now in this dialogue and in this conversation? And so mm-hmm. would you prepare your hearts tonight um, just to be challenged, to, to be uh, engaged in um, looking at and, and attempting in our own time and in our own hearts to really draw near to this God um, that, that Job um, is interacting with and the God of the Bible, the creator God of the universe that, that sent Christ as our Messiah and, um, and has met us in, in some of our greatest times of need. And um, this is who he is. And um, and this is what he says about himself. Let me pray, and then Craig, would you take us through that text? Mm-hmm. Um, Father, as we come to you tonight, as we bow our hearts in, in our homes, maybe in our living rooms, maybe it's on our phones, as we bow our hearts together, uh, Lord, before a creator God that's outside of time and that created all of these things, and God that we believe is sovereign, you are sovereign in this moment and in this time, you have been with us, you are with us, and 
Um, God, you have allowed this to happen um, for your glory and f- for the, uh, deve- the building up of your church and for the purposes of the gospel and for maturing us and maybe even calling us out um, as American churches who quite possibly, Father, have, have gotten comfortable. And it's in this time, Lord, that we want to turn our hearts and our eyes to you and to your word to hear from you. And Lord, hopefully to see a glimpse of who you are. So I pray, Father, that you would do that for us tonight as we engage your word in your name. Amen. Amen. So follow along with me, Job 38. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you will make make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? And who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors? when it burst out of the womb, when I made clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place that it might take hold of its skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked, their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light? And where is the place of darkness? That you may take it to its territory and that you may discern the paths to its home. You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow? Or have you seen the storehouses of the hail, which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? What is the way to the place where the light is distributed or where the east wind is scattered upon the earth? Amen. Mm. Man, I, I, uh, I think, you know, when I, when I think of that text, the, one of the very first things that grabs me is how he talks about the earth as being a garment. Mm. He speaks of the mountains and the, the landscape as being a garment that can be shaken like we would do a, a, a garment or I mean, think of that. We do that with our rugs, right? We, mm-hmm. we take them out of the house and beat them and all kinds. He's, he talks about it as if it's clothing or, or a garment. And I just, that's amazing to me. I, I don't see the earth as being something that pliable as mm-hmm. something that, that simple, which I guess part of the question is, man, how, how significant must God be if this, earth that is massive to us functions as merely a garment to him. Um, it, it, it's really overwhelming to me when I think about him in that capacity. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you guys as we read through this, um, and you know, you know I've been challenging the church to read through this for the last couple of weeks to, to really get a hold of it, to engage it and say, man, God, what are you saying to me if this is true? What do you? What am I supposed to learn? Um, one of my questions for you guys tonight was, how has that impacted you as you read through that text? What's something that really stands out and grabs a hold of you and says, "Wow, wow." Well, for me, we fall into this. Um, we we think that somehow that we have control of our lives, mm-hmm. and that uh, we are our own gods. Uh, we we all do it, and. The, as he describes in this case, just the earth and what he's done, mm-hmm. you realize your insignificance. You know, when you're standing on the shores of the ocean 
and like he says, it's, it's this thick darkness around there and the clouds are there and you can hear the roaring and you can see the curve of the earth and you realize how small and insignificant you are. And the same thing, how insignificant you are in comparison to this vast creation yeah. that you're a part of. Yeah. And you're just a land dweller who's open to the sky above. Mm. Just as, as that magnitude is there, then you have the earth in comparison to the solar system, mm -hmm. which he doesn't even mention that. No. He doesn't even need to go that far. Right. That's and later then you, on, I think, a little bit, right? In yeah, I think that's in some other places. And then, yeah. and then he takes that, you take that solar system and you expand that to the galaxy. And then the thousands upon thousands of galaxies, and even to the end of the universe. Yeah. If there is an end, when we have an infinite God. Right. And He created all of that with His Word. And it's, that's who we serve. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Spectacular. Mm -hmm. It is. Amen. Uh, there was, a, I, I, I read along the lines of what you're saying about just how, you, you said how, how significant God is. And, you know, I, I hear that idea of insignificant we are in comparison to him and his might. Um, and uh, you, you touched on, like, how God approached him and everything. And it says somewhere in the New Testament that knowledge puffs up, but mm -hmm. love builds up. Mm. And um, I, I, you know, I, I love science, and so I love to learn about, you know, the expanse of the universe and how far uh, light travels and stuff like that. And they actually did this amazing thing because in between a lot of the stars, when you look up in the night sky, it's just, you know, darkness, you know, blankness. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of people will talk about that blankness in between. Well, if you took a grain of rice and held it out at arm's length, they took a telescope and measured that much of space and then shot it out light years ahead through a telescope, a mighty NASA telescope. And what they found in those empty parts of space was not emptiness, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, not stars, galaxies. Right. Mm -hmm. Little swirling yep. balls of galaxies. Yep. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's just, that's just a grain of rice. And it's in the empty part in between the stars. Just this, the size of a grain of rice. Do you know how many grains of rice there are and how big the sky is? Not very many at Costco right now. No, not, not very <laughs> many at Costco. That was a bad joke. I think, gosh, yeah. I can't stop. <laughs> You're right. I, I, you are exactly right, Travis. I think that's the, that's the gravity of, uh, of what we're wrestling with. Even in this time, when we talk about, or, you know, when we talk about uh, empty shelves at, at, a, at a, um, a grocery store mm -hmm. or long lines, that there's so many things that we don't see about who God is. And because of our, our shortness of sight, our inability to see him for who he is, mm -hmm. we, we have those gaps in what's really out there and what we perceive to be going on. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of this. One of the second things that grabs me that I love about this particular text. And there's so much more, because if you keep reading, uh, he just oh, keeps going so on and on mm -hmm. about the significance and, and, you know, calling these guys out saying you were there. I love the comment about you've been born. You've been here so long. You know, many are your days. <laughs> that to me you're is so is old. Yeah. Just, no. It's astounding how he, mm -hmm. how he, you're, you're old enough. You got it. Know. Right. You're right. He graciously <laughs> calls them out. But one of the things that grabbed me as I was reading this the very first time was verse 22, where he says, if you enter the storehouses of the snow, or have you seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserved for the time of trouble for the day of battle, and war, and I thought to myself, "What? No, mm. I've I've never even contemplated hail and snow as a reserve, mm -hmm. as something that God holds on to for Him to use at His beck and call for either for the nourishment of the earth, or for judgment, or for seasons, or any of that aspect. I'd never even calculated that He has a storehouse." Mm a specific storage of those things set aside for his use. Mm -hmm. I, I've thought of them as being, well, it's the, it's the change of the weather, right? Uh, it, was, it was last weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sitting there looking at my vehicles going, man, I have to drive the truck. I can't go drive the Mustang. I got to <laughs> drive the truck because there's snow on the ground. Ah, woe is me. Um, it, it, we, I don't think of it as being 
a, a something that he reserves for his use, that he has a storehouse full of them. He, he, he goes, have you seen them? Have you entered into the storehouses that I have stored somewhere in heaven for this purpose, for my purpose? Uh, and obviously the answer is what? Uh, no, I, I haven't. <laughs> wow. What, what's something else that grabbed you as you guys were reading through this text? Maybe something else that really stuck out to you. Well, one of the things I noticed was, you know, verse 19, it says, where is the way of the dwelling of light? Oh, yeah. It mentions that. And then at the, in the last verse 24, it says, where is the, where the, the place where the light is distributed? And what it made me realize is that when we go to um, uh, John 1, 4, 3, is life. And the life was the light of men. Yeah. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus Christ is that light. Yep. And yeah. so even here, as he's telling him, where is the way to the dwelling of light? There's actually an answer to that. Right. And it's Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. He Absolutely. is the light and he has shown us that light. What is the way to the place where the light is distributed? It's Jesus within us through the spirit yeah. that we can distribute to the rest of the world. It's not us. And it's not in us. Yep. It's in us with the, the Holy Spirit, Christ, but it's not yeah. through our power. Right. It's through His power. And that yeah. even, you know, the New Testament church didn't have the New Testament. Right. Yeah. They had the Old Testament, and He speaks throughout all of it about Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the creator. He's the yeah. of our faith. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was the first thing that God created? In the very it was beginning, light. it was light. It was light. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We we made a connection of that mm -hmm. at youth group, um, two weeks ago. Oh, nice. Between, uh, the light that God created in the beginning. I mean, reading. You know, you touched on John. The first mm -hmm. few verses. It's in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Talking mm -hmm. about Jesus being the light of men, and then you go to Genesis chapter one, and in the beginning was God. And God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light. Yeah, and there mm -hmm. was light. Yep. There's a reason those sound pretty similar. Absolutely. The writer of John meant that, so. meant that. Meant to tie us to that connection. That was an intentional, yeah, an intentional connection. What a profound truth. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that I've been wrestling with this week, as I'm sure many of, of us have, was, okay, Lord, so... How, how do we be the church then, mm. now? How, how does this impact how I serve you now? If, if this is the God who established the foundations of the earth, who set the boundaries of the waves, who, who walks through the storehouses of snow and hail, who, who shakes out the earth like a garment, mm -hmm. who is the source of light and knows where it's distributed and how it's distributed, if that's the God that I serve, then how do I allow this truth to impact my life today, tomorrow, in the midst of this significant time of need. I mean, the world, probably rightfully so, if they don't have God as their hope, are in terror, fear mm -hmm. of what this, uh, what corona can do, this coronavirus could do, or, or any other, take any other tragedy or episode, a pandemic that might hit our, our shores. Mm -hmm. I really don't fault them for being afraid, but as I'm reading this, I, I'm wrestling in my own heart. God, how, how does this impact how I live for you then, mm -hmm. now, and today? Have you guys thought about that at all this week? Well, this is our God. Yeah. Yeah. And as insignificant as we feel after reading this, he has said, but you are significant. Right. And so that's, he's got it all. The kingdom of God starts here. Mm-hmm. But it continues forever, and there is, you know, as Scripture says, death, where is your sting? Yeah. It doesn't matter. So we have this hope that we can give to people. We do not need to fear, just like it says many times in Scripture, do not fear. Yeah. God uses these things for His will. We think of these things as evil, hmm. but they're not. They're not necessarily evil. Satan can't win. He, God has already won. Through yeah. the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, yeah. so we are victors, and he he owns it all. He's got it all. It's all his stuff. We don't need it, and he's going to take care of us. Yeah. Um, it may not feel like it, but count it all joy when you encounter various trials, mm -hmm. yep. as it says in James. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because he's going to perfect you. 
So. I'm actually super excited about that aspect, and I'm I'm blown away again by how God moves through the text of Mark and lines stuff up for us each week. Mm-hmm. Um, because Sunday, um, when we gather again here uh, in this in this sa- uh, setting, Sunday we get to actually look at the text that says we are all salted with fire, mm-hmm. um, and and so we're going to look at this idea of of being salted with fire and how that how that saltiness, how, how that affects how we live. But I, I love how he ends that text, and, and we're going to wrestle with some of James and some of those different mm-hmm. passages on Sunday. Um, but he ends it with, and be at peace with everyone. Mm-hmm. And, and so in the midst of, of this moment, in the midst of this time, as we're considering what God's doing and who he is and who he's called us to be, um, I, I think that, that we have such a great challenge and such a great opportunity to be the church and to care for those who don't have hope to engage them in a meaningful way uh, around the hope that we have. Um, and I just love that. I, I, I didn't, I'll be honest, you guys, Monday, I wasn't loving this. Um, I'm just going to be transparent with you guys. Monday, I wasn't loving this. Monday, I was kind of, I was sitting in my office and actually I stayed, I was, had a hard time even sleeping. Monday morning, I was up super early, worried and wrestling with, man, what are we going to do? How are we going to get here? How do we do this well? How do we care for the church in this setting? How, how do we deal with all of the, the, the potential chaos? Mm. But as you can tell, I'm kind of getting excited about it, and it's probably going to be <laughs> problematic for, for us because um, when that happens, we start praying for God to do amazing stuff, and he does, mm-hmm. and he responds. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I really am looking forward to that. I want to wrap up with this. And uh, do you guys I mean, have anything else, or are you okay with me wrapping Wrapping this up, did you have a thought? Oh, I just wanted to, to touch on um, some of the some of the struggles that I've had, and and my prayer is that other people have had it too, and we can be encouraged together. Is that being isolated can and can be a, a great opportunity, like what you're talking about. But the danger is, even though these are a great medium to reach out and stuff like that, they can also be a great distraction. And when when I get fearful, when I get frustrated or anything like that, rather than go to the Lord. Or reach out to my brothers and sisters, you know, for encouragement or, or talk to my wife about it. I'll, I'll numb myself with YouTube or Facebook or video games and stuff like that. And, I mean, I, I've got all the time in the world. I can get to level 100 on most of my video games now. You're not there but, already? What's that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But uh, we, we will be doing video game nights with the, with the youth group. Looking um, forward so to I'm, that. I'm looking forward to that. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just something that I struggle with because – Similar to you, it's like, oh man, you know, I'm uh, newlywed and I'm a, I'm a young man and everything, and I've got, I've just got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm trying to think of. Like, I want to protect my my wife, and I've got people that I care about. I really care about these people here, and there's like a there's like a tension. You you've used that before that that tension of like, I want to help, but I'm scared. And then I began to read this and just really reflect on, you know what. God can do whatever he wants. It's, it's a, this world's a blanket to him. Floomp. Oh, look at that. A bunch of people go flying. Go visit some of those galaxies <laughs> millions of years, light years away. And uh, because of that, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, anxious to see what he's going to do next. But, mm-hmm. uh, but where this can be a great tool, it can also be a great distraction. So just yeah. uh, recognize that and uh, reach, out to, reach out to people. Absolutely, it's the mm-hmm. it's the spirit that brings us together. It's not this. Yeah, and I love I love that warning, that encouragement. That's so important. I love the fact that you said you were like me as a young married and a young man. <laughs> I I really appreciate that. Um, I think he was as, as, I think he was in, uh, intending that to be that I'm struggling, and so we're struggling together. But <laughs> well, but he's the one I without really, the beard now, I, so I appreciate he looks that. so young. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. You guys, I want to end our time tonight. We're going to sing a song in, in here in just a minute, but I want, to, I want you to turn in your Bibles to, to Psalm 121. So take a second and do that. Um, I'm waiting to hear the ruffling of the pages. <laughs> Are you there yet? Um, I, can I be really honest with you? Uh, this is the hardest part for me in this time, and that's one of the reasons I want to close tonight with, with just a personal encouragement. Um, but it's different not having you here. It's different not, not seeing your faces, not hearing the noise of, of the, the joy and the hope that has been part of this church family for the last year and a half and, and the celebration of being together. And, and I know that. I, I can feel it. 
Um, our staff has noticed it, um, and, and it's, it's part of what we're going to grow together in as we do this. And so I just wanted to remind us this evening, Psalm 121, it says this, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We, we just read about that in Job, hmm. who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. We are the children of God. As his children, we are covered by the God of the universe that established the foundations of the world, that established the universe, the stars, the God that knows the storehouses. He walks and, and established the gates of the deep. That's the God that we serve. And, the, and David seemed to understand that this is the God that is his help, that it never sleeps. He never leaves us unattended or unprotected. And, and it's that hope, it's that confidence that allows us to actually close in the song that we're going to close in tonight in It Is Well. It Is Well. So would you join us as we um, lift our voices this evening? And if you don't hear myself, hopefully you don't. It, my voice is getting a little scratchy. Um, but would you sing along with Travis and, and Craig and I as we bow our hearts this evening um, before the Lord and celebrate that it is well with my soul because of the God that we serve. Grand earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken from my regard And through it all, through it all My eyes are on through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me. Far be it from me. Not believe, even when my eyes can't see, and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all. Through it all, it is well. And through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well. It is well. So let go, my soul, and trust in Him. The waves and wind still know His name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him the waves and wind still know his name the waves and wind still know his name it is well with my
as well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul through it all through it all my eyes are through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me. So let me remind you tonight that uh, we're asking the question, how is it that we can be the church and be the light to our community? Uh, remember that we have a couple of things. One is the, the need of the food bank. Um, if, if you are interested in helping with that and, and sending uh, food, please contact the church and let us know um, what, what the needs are, what you're seeing as needs. Uh, if you want to help, we're, we're looking to put together uh, ministry teams to serve people and how to do that kind of stuff. Um, and so we, we want to engage in that. Um, another way that you can help uh, is to actually be in part of, of this time, be in the Word together, together with your family, together with your neighbor, together with your life group, together with somebody at the church that maybe maybe you, you're concerned about them being connected and talked to. So I just want to challenge you to engage in that. Our mission statement is to reach the lost for Jesus, to connect them to his body, to make disciples. And we can do that now in this time. Um, on, on a personal note, I just want to share with you that, um, wow, I didn't think I was going get, to get to this point. Um, man, we miss you guys. Um, and it's never more apparent than when you know you're not going to be able to see and uh, to hug and to connect with one another. I know some of y'all don't like hugs, but I don't care. Um, I love hugging people. And, uh, and so I just want you to know that uh, in your home right now, in your living room, and wherever you're meeting with us at this time, um, you're loved, you're thought about, you're cared for. And uh, we look forward to the day that we get to celebrate, whether it's here on this earth or it's in heaven, but where we get to embrace and, and, and celebrate together the body of Christ that he's given us. Our help comes from the Lord. Our hope is in Him because of Job 38, because of who God is. So um, I just want to wish you guys a, a blessed night, and may God bless you in your pursuit of Him this week. May God bless you in your pursuit of being the body and serving one another as Christ would serve and being a light to the community that God has placed you for His glory and His purposes only. Amen. And uh, go with the Lord, and um, please let us know what God's doing so we can celebrate it together through God at Work. Send us those emails so we can connect. Lord, tonight as we close, may you be glorified in all that you do, and may we be the light of our communities, the reflection of your glory and your purpose, your hope, the joy that comes because you are God, and we are your children. May you be glorified, Lord, tonight in your name. Amen. God bless, and we will see you on Sunday. Bye.